Greetings to you. Rock O'Connor here on Route 66. For the last, uh, once ordinary time started, and for about the last 10 days, basically, we've been listening to um, Matthew chapter 5, uh, which is the Beatitudes, basically, or the whole Sermon on the Mount. We're in that section now in the daily readings, and I've been hearing them differently. Uh, I just wanted to share some things with you about that. So what I want to do today, <clears throat> hopefully this will be like a series, I want to talk about the context in which uh, the uh, Sermon on the Mount takes place. Part of the deal is uh, chapters and verse numbers were not introduced, as far as I can remember, <laughs> into uh, the scriptures until after the printing press was invented, or maybe just before, so 1400s. After then, um, I guess there was an agreed upon division of chapters and verses and stuff. That's what, what we deal with today. What I want to start with today, though, is a look at the context coming out of chapter 4, not the whole dang chapter. But the, um, um, the immediate chapter, then I'll go back to the beginning of chapter 4 to lead in again. So here's, here's what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to go to the screen share, and it looks like this. Matthew chapter 4. I want to comment on three segments here. I've done this before with Matthew chapter 4, the call of the first disciples. Now, you could read this too, but as he is walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. I don't know what a net did to be cast into the sea, but it couldn't have been that bad for her. But either casting a net into the sea, they were fishermen. Okay, first kind of, duh. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of anthropoi, of human beings. At once they left their nets and followed him. Again, I've referred to this in a couple other uh, instances, but the term casting a net, um, amphibalo, is a verb. They were casting... Uh, the, 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 that, that term, amphibalo, is used in the Old Testament in one place in Habakkuk. And what it signifies is idolatry. Is uh, the uh, uh, amphi, whatever the amphi is, the net, is the one to which, is the thing to which the, the fisher, fisher man would... Uh, sacrifice because it was providing him a livelihood and more so it refers to uh, the great uh, exile that's that thing so they're signified to be idolaters okay and once they left their nets dictua which is the word in Greek for the physical nets in other words they left the wrong nets. They did not leave the nets of idolatry. Rather, they left the physical net, nets and followed him as sinners, as idolaters. That's a crucial point. And it, uh, I'll skip the thing about uh, James and John being called, but that's similar. Right after James and John, he went around to all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, curing every disease and illness among the people, teaching, proclaiming the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, and curing. They're linked together in Jesus' teaching. His fame spread to all of Syria. Whoa! And they brought to him all who were sick with various diseases, racked with pain, those who were possessed, lunatics, paralytics, and he cured them. 
So we'll see a bunch of these people that he run in, runs into in Matthew uh, through the gospel. And great crowds from Galilee, the ten cities, the Decapolis, Jerusalem and Judea, and from far beyond the Jordan followed him. All these people, they're all sick. They're bringing people with their sickness and their disease to and they're following him. So we see this, uh, uh, great crowds, okay, right there. When he saw the crowds, hmm, these are the crowds that are following him. People from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Galilee, Judea, beyond the Jordan. He went up the mountain. The mountain has basically two significations in um, Hebrew scriptures. One part has to do with the, um, the mountain on which God made the covenant with Israel. So in chapter 19 from Exodus, there's thunder on the mountain, there's uh, trumpets and huge clouds and rolling thunder. And uh, don't, don't, we don't want to hear God. We don't want to hear God. So Moses became the inter, interlocutor with God. Um, so that's one signification. He went up on the mountain. The other signification is also significant. That's where in the mountains and the valleys, you know, think um, uh, Isaiah 40, the mountains shall be, uh, raised and the valley, uh, mountains shall be laid low and the valleys raised. The mountains and the valleys were where the people sacrificed, especially to the god Moloch. They sacrificed their children. It was a site of idolatry. So what Jesus does is go up to occupy the place of idolatry and teach and cure in his teaching. And here's the key saying I want to focus on just for a moment. And after he sa had sat down, his disciples came to him. Okay, you got the crowds and you got the disciples. How did the disciples know who were the disciples? I mean, you got vast numbers of people as signified here. And then the disciples come up. My sense has been that from the crowd, those who were willing and able to be taught came up to him to be taught. And he began to teach them saying, that's what I think uh, every time we sit, this is the opposite thing in the synagogue. He sits down, the teacher sits down, the disciples show up and stand. It, at Mass, what we do is uh, uh, we sit down as the people of God to listen to the readings, signifying we're available to be taught. The question is for us, are we always able and willing to be taught. So there's a little uh, thing to think about as we go into the Beatitudes. Ready to be taught? Not ready to be taught. You belong to the disciples, students, or you, we, do we belong to the crowds? Well, there's a lot of days I belong to the crowds. How about you? So that's what I wanted to uh, just start with right now. Um, to start with that those notions of uh, those called to be disciples are not perfect people. They're not complete. They're either wounded and, and ill. They're idolaters. They're sinners. That's you and me, folks. Uh, when, as we're ready and willing to be taught, we step forward to uh, listen to Jesus. So there's uh, something to begin with today. And uh, God bless you all. And I wish you a very happy week. Um, may God bless our country. May God bless our world. 
and heal our divisions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bye now.